Welcome back to New Day Northwest from the AAA Travel Alcove. Welcome back. Seattle in the 90s and grunge go hand in hand, right? And now a new repackaging of comics from that time is bringing Gen X back to the front of our minds. The Complete Hate is a three volume set that includes the original 1990 to 1998 30 issue comic run with lots of other extras packed in. I spoke with illustrator Peter Bagg. So Peter, first the title of the series, Hate, right? That can be a very loaded word. How did you come up with the idea for that title for the series? Um, well, I, prior to Hate, I had a regular comic book. I had like a my own solo comic book called Neat Stuff. And with that title, Neat Stuff, that created its own set of problems because it sounded fun and friendly. A lot of people just by the title alone assumed it was for kids. Mm -hmm. And it most definitely was not for kids. <laughs> I was writing, well, mainly for myself, writing to entertain myself. And I was an adult, so it was an adult comic. So uh, two things happened when I changed the title, when I started this new title, which I wanted to be all about this one character. And the character's name was Buddy Bradley. So I thought of just calling it, Hey Buddy. But that still sounded like kind of a kid's comic. Uh, and I also thought I wanted something really short. Either me or my publisher, we jokingly mentioned hate. What about hate? Nobody will think it's a kid comic if <laughs> we call it that. And it's nice and short. Uh, but then we're like, no, but no, yeah, that's funny. But no, we can't do that. And after a while, we were just like, I can't think of anything better. And the same with my publishers. So we said, all right, let's be insane and just call it hate. Although sometimes, too, even to this day, I'm like, Oh, screw it. It's a great title. I love that title. And, and Peter, <laughs> no one will mistake it for kids comic. I mean, yeah, and there's and it solved buddy, that problem. Too. It solved that problem. So, well, you know, when when you think about the release of the this deluxe box set, does it make you nostalgic for the 90s at all? A bit. Yeah, when I read it, when I was again like when we were putting it together, uh, I was rereading it all over again. Two things that really strike me that appear a lot that I realize are no longer a thing entirely because of the internet and computer technology is one is telephones. There are so many scenes in the comic book where people are talking on, you know, old fashioned telephones. And, uh, and the other is zines. Like now you would just have make your, you know, you have social media, you could have a blog, you have your own website. But I remember how, at least amongst in the world I was in, almost everybody at some point had their own zine, which was their way of telling the world, this is what I'm into, this is what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had forgotten how, what a thing that was, people having their own zines. So look, let's talk about this piece that I think is relevant to all ages, this, this grunge movement, the grunge music, obviously hate predated that, but it still ended up being part of it because you're kind of part of the 90s. So how do you feel your series kind of tied in with grunge music? Um, well, you know, I, mixed feelings about it. Again, like that word, when I first started doing the comic book, that word didn't even exist yet, or it wasn't part of the lexicon. And, and you work way ahead of time. Like I'll be drawing a comic months before it appears in print and I'll be conceiving of story ideas like even a year before that. So anyhow, I had, I had a lot of friends, not so much the musicians. Like I knew a handful of the people in these bands, but I mainly knew, I like to call them the exploiters. I knew the people who owned the record labels, owned the record stores, managed the bands. They used to, because they would be more my age. They okay. would tell me very funny stories and this, I, I got tons of story ideas. So I had my character manage a band. So, but by the time that issue came out, it's like, I thought, oh, I'm gonna use all these stories that my friends are telling me about managing a band. Um, and it wasn't gonna be a major part of it. It was just gonna be like a little two part thing. Uh, but by the time that came out, Nirvana's Nevermind album came out and that exploded. And then everybody was talking about grunge. So, to a lot of people, much to my frustration, they thought I was jumping on some bandwagon, that I was just exploiting all of this. <laughs> You're like, no, hate was first. Thank you very that's, much. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and that's the other thing. Set the record straight here. Yes. And I, you know what? I wish that that's just it, too. The very first issue of hate sold very well for like an independent comic. It did really well right out of the gate. And so by the time the grunge thing happened, it wound up, you know, my characters are managing managing a band. This is like a year later. It'd be great if the sales spiked. They didn't. 
So if I was exploiting the scene, I did a bad job of it. <laughs> it, it didn't help sales at all. <laughs> I get, yeah. So hate is where it is right now, but you may consider in the future resurrecting it the yeah, series yeah. or the characters if you feel like demand is there. Yes, never. I, and, and... I'd like to think that some of the most interesting things happen after 40, yes. but uh, we got to figure out how well, we they're... tell those stories. They're interesting to you. They're interesting when they're happen to you, happening to you. But, uh, well, that's the other thing, too, is like my core fan base of eight, they got older. They were having kids. They had mortgages. So they're not going to schlep on down to the local comic shop every month to see if uh, the new comic book is out. The one, the main reason that if hate does get resurrected, which has, and this is something that comes up over and over again is I've had quite, I've had at least a half dozen development deals with TV networks to turn it into an animated TV show. I've never, it's never been greenlit though. Hmm. I've made good money developing it. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made in the business of not making TV shows. <laughs> but uh, so for that reason alone, I'm always up for doing it, but I've never grabbed that brass ring. All right, maybe next time. Well, up next, important safety reminders about flu and COVID-19 to keep in mind. We'll be right back.